Hello and welcome. I hope that you are having a fantastic day. We're going to talk about Bitcoin news today. We're going to look at Bitcoin fees are skyrocketing and Bitcoin beats gold as the most profitable investment of 2020. Imagine that. Bitcoin is in, is is beating the stock market. It's beating uh, different kinds of mutual funds. It's beating silver and beating gold. At this moment, Bitcoin is the most profitable investment of 2020. Let's get into it. In today's video, we're going to talk about four different articles. We're going to look at Bitcoin fees are skyrocketing ahead of the Bitcoin halving. We're going to take a look at Bitcoin Lightning Network gets larger payments improved routing. We're going to take a look at $9,000 Bitcoin, Bitcoin bet from 2013 just got settled. And then finally, Bitcoin bets gold as, beats gold as the most profitable investment of 2020. So we have a great video set up for you today. Watch all the way through the end. You're going to love what you hear. Should I buy Bitcoin now or should I wait? We're going to give you ideas that will help you take profits and avoid losses. Can we get this video to 99 likes? It really helps us out in terms of promoting the video through YouTube and Google and other resources. So do us a favor, smash that like button. It really makes a big difference. Now, I'm not a financial advisor. What you're about to hear, this is not financial advice. This is my opinion. So as always, when you're investing in cryptocurrency, it's very risky and it includes a substantial risk of loss. So definitely take a look at this disclaimer and be fully aware of it before you make any cryptocurrency investments. Now, at this particular moment, it is 6.53 a.m. Central Standard Time. May 4th of 2020. And at this particular moment, Bitcoin is trading for $8,684. That's a loss of about 4% in the last 24 hours. And Bitcoin still has a dominance of about 66.41% compared to the rest of the market. So also, as you can see, the majority of the market is in red with a few green outliers here and there. But just as normal, whenever Bitcoin goes up, everything goes up. When Bitcoin goes down, everything goes down. So the, the general cryptocurrency market is behaving as expected. Now, Bitcoin fees, and I shouldn't really say behaving as expected. My expectation was we were going to see green this morning, but obviously I was wrong on that expectation. Bitcoin fees are skyrocketing ahead of the Bitcoin halving. Now, in brief, the average fee for transaction on the Bitcoin network hit $2.94 on April 30th. That is the highest in 10 months. Bitcoin's mempool shows data backlog that will take hours to clear. As the network becomes congested, users must pay higher fees to make it into the next block, thus driving up fees. The average transaction fee on the Bitcoin blockchain has hit the highest level in 10 months. Data from BitInfo charts shows that Bitcoin fees spiked to a high of $2.94 on April 30th, a level not observed since July of 2019. 24 hours earlier, average fees were perched around the $1.28 range. One day earlier still, the average fee was $0.66. Cents. But on Thursday night, fees increased by 129% to the 10-month high. You can see how on this chart how it just spiked up that Thursday evening. Despite the sudden spike in the past few days, average fees on the Bitcoin network were on the rise all throughout April. From April 1st to April 30th, average fees increased by 673%. And so uh, the fees on the Bitcoin network, because of all of this congestion, were driven up higher and higher because people were willing to pay more in order to get their uh, transactions completed faster. 
High fees, while not ideal in any situation, can be viewed as an increase in demand for space on the Bitcoin network. With Bitcoin having just over a week away and as the economy remains uncertain in light of the COVID-19 lockdown, the surfeit of demand could be a good thing. And so that spike in demand on Bitcoin is what pushed the fees higher. And so on one side of the coin, the higher fees is a good sign of increased demand. Increased demand always increases the price. The transaction speed on Bitcoin as partly limited by its one megabyte block size, the current 67 megabyte backlog displayed on blockchain.com will have to be cleared one block at a time before fees revert to normal levels. Based on Bitcoin's 10 minute block time, that could take in excess of 10 hours. 10 hours is a long time. And so hopefully those have gotten cleared out. Hopefully we're starting to see the fees come back down to a more normal, a more acceptable range. Um, but I hadn't double checked it. I saw the article, thought it was interesting, and it would be worth looking into this a little bit further. So, uh, but on the flip side of the coin, this is kind of the opposite news as to something that's going to help keep the fees in a better range and that is the Lightning Network. Bitcoin's Lightning Network gets larger payments and improved routing. So Lightning Labs has released version 0.10 of its LND software, one of the most popular Lightning Network implementations. The update beefs up LND's max channel capacity, quadrupling the amount of Bitcoin that can be locked into channels. It also sets the groundwork for better payment routing and improved channel infrastructure. The update focuses on improvements to routing efficiency, channel database architecture, and futures, features involving opening and closing of channels on the network. All of these additions are working to make routing lightning payments more, efficiently, more efficient and to make lightning channel infrastructure more reliable. The Lightning Network is a second layer solution built on top of Bitcoin. And so, um, you know, as a second layer solution, they're working to solve lots of very complex problems because uh, they don't have uh, direct and immediate access to the blo Bitcoin blockchain. And they're responsible, the Lightning Network would be responsible for making sure that uh, cryptocurrency isn't double spent or that you're pulling money out of a wallet or an address that no longer has those funds and a lot of other uh, important things to ensure the, the reliability, trustability of the Bitcoin network. And so all of those are critical things to have happen in the Bitcoin network. But the ultimate goal, the ultimate benefit of the Lightning Network is going to be that it would prevent things that are happening like uh, the Bitcoin fees skyrocketing. If the Bitcoin Lightning Network can get implemented, then we could see the ability to handle a lot more transactions and keep those fees down. And so while the fees skyrocketing is a problem, the Lightning Network is helping to provide a solution. So one of the primary benefits of this upgrade comes from the multi-path payments, a method that could improve routing efficiency, meaning it takes less time for them to, to uh, provide a block for that data to be added to, and more concurrently quadruples the maximum amount of Bitcoin LND lets users lock into channels, thus providing channels with more liquidity. A related change is the lifting of the maximum invoice size, which was previously 4.2 million Satoshis, or 0.042 Bitcoins, to 16.7 million Satoshis, or 0.167 Bitcoins, the company announcement read. It also includes support for partial, partially signed Bitcoin transactions, a cryptographic trick primarily used by hardware wallets to sign transactions on the device without exposing the key, the private key, to a computer. With PSBT support, Litecoin's new network upgrade, users running their own node will be able to open new Lightning channels directly from their hardware wallets 
Inaccessible before, this simple function will open up possibilities for users to link their Lightning Network channels to their cold storage or multi-signature setups. So cold storage meaning hardware wallets and multi-signature setups meaning you've got a situation where you're uh, custodying cryptocurrency and you require two, three, or four different hardware wallets, different uh, uh, private keys in order to create a transaction on the, the funds that are located in those addresses. So this updated version of the software also revamps how LND settles a channel when it does close. Note, Lightning Network transactions take place off of Bitcoin's blockchain, so the settlement is deferred until the channel closes. Originally, LND was designed so users had to agree on a fee beforehand. This is typically not an issue, though for channels that are open for extended periods of time or when Bitcoin's price on-chain volume are rocked by volatility, such as what we saw a few days ago, this can cause issues for channels closing if a fee is, for example, too low, which is kind of what we were talking about in this article, how fees were skyrocketing because of the volume. And so this change that they're talking about, this new feature, changes to this anchor commitment format will make the process more dynamic, allowing users to submit a revised fee after a channel closes if needed in order to get the thing processed more quickly. And so this has a huge benefit because if, if you submitted an order, submitted uh, a, a transaction to the Lightning Network and you found that that transaction was taking too long, you can up the fee that you're willing to pay in order to get the transaction processed more quickly. That is huge and could really have a huge benefit during times where Bitcoin fees are skyrocketing in order to get your transaction prom processed at the minimum possible fee. So those are, those are actually really good things. This new anchor commitment format enables fee savings as well as more reliable channel closes. The Lightning Labs post read, though, it cautioned that it is still in the experimental stage and has not been finalized yet. And so all of this is actually really good news in the Bitcoin network. The good news here is that there's a huge spike in the amount of volume. And the good news here is that they're actually coming up with a solution that's in the not too distant future that'll solve the, the skyrocketing fees and help things transact much faster. Now, I thought this was really interesting. A $9,000 Bitcoin bet from 2013 just got settled. So Vinnie Lingram and Brent Goldman bet on Bitcoin in 2013. At the time, Bitcoin was worth just $200. Goldman agreed to sell one Bitcoin for $1,000 five years later. The bet was settled this week. And so even though the bet was supposed to have been settled sometime in 2018, these guys just didn't get around to finishing it until just a few days ago. Vinny Lingram, CEO of crypto wallet maker Civic, has won his six-year-old Bitcoin bet with Brent Goldman, director of engineering for Uber's self-driving program. In 2013, when the price of Bitcoin was $200, Bitcoin skeptic Brent agreed to hand over a whole Bitcoin five years later. In return, Lingram agreed to pay him one thousand dollars 2018 passed and the two never happened to meet in person to settle it eventually they decided to do it remotely on april 28 2020 goldman settled the bet on a zoom call handing over a full bitcoin worth seven thousand eight hundred dollars at that time yesterday that bitcoin was worth a whopping nine thousand four hundred dollars and so pretty cool. I'm glad to hear that these guys actually settled the bet and that somebody didn't renege on it, but that was an expensive, an expensive bet to settle. Finally, Bitcoin beats gold as the most profitable investment of 2020. So Bitcoin is now the best performing asset in 2020 after racking up 22% gains since the start of the year. Gold is also performing well, gaining 9.5% year-to-date despite suffering the loss in March. 
Major U.S. stock indices and oil futures are still down this year after a second after a record sell-off in March, despite recovering somewhat in April. Bitcoin has secured the position of the most profitable investment of 2020 after eclipsing the performance of gold and oil, as well as major stock indices. Since the start of the year, Bitcoin has experienced some of its highest ever volatility, which has been has seen its price fluctuate between a high of 10,446 on February 13th and a low of 4,111 on March 13th. Now, I've seen a lot of other sources actually quote prices that were in the 3,800, 3,700, and I think I saw something around 3,600, but don't quote me on that. I'd have to go back and research that just to see if I, I can actually find that, because um, maybe that is a mistake my memory isn't perfect, but I, it, it, it still serves, serves me as, as good as possible. Anyway, I have definitely seen lower priced numbers. I'm not sure where the uh, author of the article got the 4111 price for March 13th. Maybe that was the close price instead of the low of the day. According to TradingView, the cryptocurrency also witnessed one of the most dramatic sell-offs in its decade-long history, crashing from 7,700 to 4,111 in a single day, equivalent to a 47% loss. And that loss happened within a several hour period. It wasn't even really a full day. Despite this volatility, Bitcoin has now managed to recover most of the value during its mid-March crash and is now up 22.4% since the beginning of the year. And so this is a chart that kind of shows you the entire year. And you can see right in here is where Bitcoin recovered most of its value to where it was. Let me see, make sure I'm hitting that line precisely. So right in here, it peaked above, dropped down, and then it finally pushed above that price level of where it started at the beginning of the year. Gold, on the other hand, has also posted strong results so far in 2020. Starting the year at $1,529 per ounce, gold spiked to as high as $1,700 in early March, before collapsing to a low of 1,491 throughout mid-March. Since then, gold has recovered to its current value of $1,675 per ounce, equivalent to a 9.5% increase year to date. So I love it when I see that Bitcoin is outperforming everything else in the industry. I think Bitcoin... I really like Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. So I should clarify, a lot of people think that I'm a Bitcoin maximist just because the majority of the news I cover is on Bitcoin. But the reason why the majority of the news I cover is on Bitcoin is one, because the majority of the news is about Bitcoin. And that's because Bitcoin has such huge market dominance um, and because Bitcoin has a tendency to drive the entire cryptocurrency market. And so when Bitcoin does well, everything else does well. But myself personally, I've invested in as many as 35 different cryptocurrencies. And my portfolio today, while it has been focused more, I've trimmed it down based on information from my algorithm. Uh, we, we don't have nearly as many cryptocurrencies, but I am not 100% vested in Bitcoin. In fact, Bitcoin is not my largest crypto at this time. Um, in fact, the only way crypto, uh, Bitcoin will become my largest crypto is if Bitcoin increases faster um, and outperforms the other cryptos that I currently have invested. And historically, that's not been, I mean, there's been times where Bitcoin outperforms all of the rest of the cryptocurrency market. But for the most part, Bitcoin, when Bitcoin's going up, there's other cryptocurrencies that are going up faster than Bitcoin. And so hopefully I've picked some of those right ones and that we continue to see some nice gains in the overall portfolio. Now, how can I be of service to you? Do you have any questions? Do you have any thoughts? Do you disagree? I would love to hear your polite disagreements. Look, you know things I don't know. 
I know things you don't know, and when we share our knowledge together, we're going to grow smarter together. I want to grow smarter together with you. So please feel free to share comments on the YouTube channel. In the meantime, I hope that you'll like, subscribe, and hodl. And do me a favor, have a fantastic day.